Release the Kraken! Welcome back, fellow game designers. In our last one, we went ahead and finished up our Mario model. And in this one, we're going to start doing the UVs. Now, this should be pretty quick, but um, UVs are a bit awkward at first. So we're going to take it slow for the first part, and then we can kind of like run through. The process is going to be pretty much the same for each part. Um, so, without further ado, I'm going to go down, make sure we turn off our references. We no longer need those, so I'll go ahead and turn that off. And let's start with the head. That's going to be pretty easy. Um, grab the head, go up to modeling here, and then UVs, and then UV editor. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just dock my toolkit to the uh, thing here. There we go. Carefully don't dock this anywhere else. All right, so when you first look at your model's UVs, it might look like something like this. Um, all primitive objects come in with UVs, but we have to uh, reconfigure these so they make sense so when we go ahead and paint on them. No big deal. Go ahead and take the head here. And to make life easier, I'm going to turn off everything else. So turn these off. I'll turn the hat off. And I'll get rid of the hair as well. Where is the hair? Hair, hair, hair. Ah, hair's way up there. Okay. So there is the head. And what I want to do is start cutting uh, this up so it's unfolded. Think of it like a bear, bear skin rug. You, know, you cut, you unfold it and flatten them out. So um, with this, same kind of deal. So the first thing I want to do is project this. So I'm going to go up to create and then come down and we have a few options. We can do a planar projection, a spherical proje uh, projection, and whatnot. And each, each one does something different um, to accommodate certain shapes. So for this one, this is mostly a sphere. So we could do a spherical projection and then do some adjustments. But for the sake of learning the process, we're going to go ahead and do planar. I'm going to hit, hit Options. And we're going to take a uh, snapshot of this from the best position. So in our case, we want to be able to paint on the front of the face. So we can do the eyes and stuff. So we want the front to be the part that we're going to work on. And we want to do all of our cutting toward the back. So here is my Z. And I want to choose my Z axis. And it's going to take a picture from our Z. Go ahead and hit Apply. Close that. And here is our character's head projected. Now we can't leave it like this because we have the front of the face and the back of the face overlapping. UVs can't overlap, so we're going to have to do some adjustments. Jump on into edge mode here. Now we're going to cut this head up. So I'm going to start from the top here. I'm going to leave the face area flat. So I'm going to grab this top edge. I'm going to hold shift and kind of go through the back of the head here. Make sure I get these edges through, and I can go all the way through under the chin. So here and here and here. And I'll leave the face uh, untouched, because I want that to be pretty much whole. I'm going to go over to my UV toolkit. Let's go down to Cut and Sew. And we want to use the Cut option here. That's going to create a seam. See how that lined up? And it's nice and bright. So there's our cut. Let's go into UV Selection. So right click UVs, go ahead and double click it, and then we're going to go down, we want to look for unfold, and then we're going to use the unfold option, go ahead and hit that, and here is our head unfolded. Now sometimes it flips upside down, but you can go ahead and map this and figure out where the top and bottom are. So if I go into um, UVs here, or face mode, I'm going to go ahead and select right here, and you can see this grouping of UVs that is the top of my model. Uh, that means this is the bottom, and then these are the ears. So I'm going to just double click this. I'm going to rotate it so it's easy to fit on our map. Now you can uh, keep it at an angle, but it's harder to paint on it in Photoshop. If you're using something like Mari or um, Substance Painter or ZBrush, it won't matter because you're going to be poly painting. But for us, we're going to paint this in Photoshop. So go ahead and just straighten this out. And then we're going to use um, the layout. So we want this to fit between the 0 and 1 coordinate space. That is the, uh, the space right behind it. So this is where it needs to be. Now I can manually shrink it down and adjust it, but there is a tool for that. So I'm going to go over uh, to my toolkit, come down to the bottom to Arrange and Layout. Open that up here. And then we will do Layout. And there it is. So this is as tightly packed into this UV shell as it can be. Now there's one thing I would like to do, which is take the edges right off of here. And the reason for that is when those seams line up, uh, we might get some distortion. 
So I'm going to shrink the head just a little bit so that when I so that I can paint outside those lines without there being an issue. So I'm going to go ahead and double click it, make sure I'm in UV mode here. Grab the middle of this and just shrink it down a little bit. That way when I paint this, I can paint just outside the edge and that'll help reduce any of those seams there. All right, so we are good on the head. The nose is going to be pretty much the same deal. Now for the nose, let's try something different. Let's go ahead and use the uh, spherical because this is pretty much a sphere. So I'm going to go up, I'm going to grab the Create tool. Let's go ahead and hit Spherical. It's going to give a UV um, projection here as a sphere. And if I zoom out, you'll see it looks a lot like the head, except it's been cut. And it gives you this perfect square like edge on over here. Not too bad. But this one over here is a bit messed up, so we're going to fix that. Okay, to fix this one, let's go into Edge Mode. And I'm going to grab the edge uh, here and here. I'm going to go over to my toolkit here. I'm going to go under where, it's, where the cut and sew option is. And let's go ahead and sew that. Okay. Now it is sewed. It is kind of messed up though. You could go into UVs and just manually start moving it. So grab that move tool, move these back in the center, move this one in the center. And that is pretty much that unfolded. Now these edges are a little bit too sharp for my liking, so I'm going to go ahead and just double click this and I will hit unfold. Hey, okay. you can see the result is very similar to what we did by hand, right? We did the cut and we did the unfold. This one we used spherical, we got a similar result, right? So more than one way to skin a cat. Now for the nose, I do want it to exist on the same map as Mario's head because we are ultimately going to glue those two things together. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the nose, I will shift select the head, and you can see how the nose and the head uh, are here. But the nose is way too big, so I'm going to go ahead and just hit my scale tool, and I'll scale it down. I'm going to fit it onto here. All right, and that should work. This will be the nose, this will be the face, and yeah, that's good enough. Nose and head are good. Let's go ahead and do the body. So I'm going to turn the body back on. Here's the torso. I'll grab that. Now we could do uh, either one. You could do a spherical on this or you could do um, the manual cut that we did before. Go ahead and do it manually. Turn the head off. Let's go to my UV tools here. All right, so the first thing I want to do is go into uh, my object mode here. We will do a create. Now let's go ahead and do the planar. I'll go ahead and hit the options for that. We will project from the front, which is our Z. So there is our torso. Let's go into edge mode. And then I'm going to take the this line back, but I want to make sure that I'm not cutting the front of the chest because we're going to have buttons here. So I'll just go up to right here on the collar, and I will shift select all the way back. Like so. Go into my uh, tools here. Let's go ahead and use the cut. Right click, go to UVs. We'll double click the shell and then hit unfold. Hey, look at that. And this looks like the top. Yes, that is the top. Now I'll go ahead and just lay that out. Then I'll shrink it just a little bit just so it's not quite touching the edges. And that's good enough. Let's go ahead and do the belly. Where is that at? Help us. There it is. Same kind of deal. I will do a front projection, so object mode. And I'll project it from the front. And then rinse and repeat. We're going to go ahead and just cut this. Now we won't actually see this top um, because this is going to be internal. We'll see some of the bottom. So we really don't even need these spaces. We could just cut them off, but for this, we will keep them. We'll go ahead and cut back all the way around. Again, we will repeat our cut, and then we will unfold. So UV mode, we'll double click it, unfold it. Hey, awesome. Then I will lay it out. Scale it down just a little bit. Good enough. 
Okay. So we got all that. Let's do the hair and the uh, hat. Finish up all the center pieces here. So here's the hair. Let's go ahead and project this from the... Let's actually do this from the top. I think that'll be the, the best position because uh, we're going to see Mario's head most of the time from the top back. We won't look at the front as much. And we can get this underneath as a separate piece, I think. So let's go ahead and do a create. We'll do a planar. We'll do from the top, which is our Y. So we get this. And I'm actually going to cut these bottom faces off. So let's go into edge mode here. And I'm going to go around this bottom ring. So get knees. I'm holding shift and double clicking to do that. We will do a cut. Go into UVs. I'm going to double click. I want to separate the bottom from the top. Okay. I'm going to get the uh, top piece. Do an unfold. And then I'll get the bottom. I'll unfold that as well. So now I have two pieces. This piece is internal. I'll, almost never, I'll probably never see it. But this is the part that matters. Right? So we go ahead and arrange these. This is the one that is priority. This one's secondary. All right, I'm going to go ahead and grab them both. Let's go down to layout. Fit them in there. We can't have them overlap. You can see how it gets them really close. We want to make sure there's a little bit of space in here. I'm going to grab them both. Scale them down just a little bit. And then I will move the interior piece away. That way I have enough space here. What can end up happening is uh, you end up with shadow bleeding or you end up with color bleeding with uh, two, two objects if they're too close to each other. So that's that part. Do the hat. Grab the hat. I'll turn the hair off. And I will save just because sometimes doing UVs, my will crash. So let's go ahead and save that. All right, here's the hat. The hat I'm going to do in a very similar fashion. Uh, pretty much cut off the bottom and keep the top as its own piece. So create. Go get a planner. If you uh, haven't changed anything, the previous options are still there. So you could just hit this. But I'm going to go to options and just make sure that I'm set. Hit project from the top. Okay. And I will cut off these bottom edges here. So grab this one, hold shift, double click it through. All right, I'm going to come up. Let's do a cut. I'm going to go ahead and separate these. Make sure you double click on them. You can separate them. Okay, so the top part is going to unfold, and then we will unfold the interior piece. Grab them both. Lay them out. Going to shrink them just a little bit. Move this one out of the way. I'll adjust it just a tad there. Good enough. I need to know where the front is. I need to make sure I know where that's at. Uh, the front is here. Okay. That way I know when I get a paint on it where that's going to be. Okay. So those middle sections are done. The legs and the arms are very simple. We're going to do one side and just pass it over to the other. So let's start with uh, the arm here. So for this, let's go ahead and do a projection from the front here. It is technically a cylinder, but it's at a weird angle, and that gets tricky. So we're going to go ahead and just do planar from the front. So that's our Z. Apply it. We end up with this. And then we're going to do some cutting. So um, let's go ahead and do uh, edge mode here. Let's take the top edge. So I grab this one, shift, double click. That should get us all the way through. It did. And then we'll get this bottom edge. Shift double click. Make sure we get the whole bottom ring. Okay. And then on the back of the arm, I'm going to grab the back here, this back one. You're going to see what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to do a cylinder cut, but I'm doing it by hand because we're at a weird angle. So with those, let's go ahead and do a cut. And then I'm going to grab uh, UVs. I'm going to grab the middle here. Let's do an unfold. So there's that piece. And then these we can unfold. 
Hey, look at that. Let's go ahead and lay these out. So grab UVs. We'll do arrange and layouts or layout. I don't really like this layout, but it's it'll work for our particular use case. Um, what it tried to do is give us the maximum amount of space, but I'm actually going to make this easier to paint on. Like that. And then these will go up here. Let's make sure we get all that. Uh, it's important as, you, as you're scaling these that you don't scale them separate of each other because you want to have the same amount of UV tile space on each object. That way the color is consistent as it wraps around. If you do different sizes, then you'll get uh, mismatching in the texture. So let's go ahead and just put this in. Hey, look, it's a frowny face. Okay, got that. Uh, we'll do the lower arm in a similar way. Um, we'll, do, we'll worry about that later. So let's go ahead and grab this one. All right, so grab this. Let's go to object mode. Create. We'll do our planar again. Same pattern as before. Now I'll show you a trick. So we've been cutting in here, but you can clearly see this object, right? I can do this in edge mode and grab this edge, and you see it works over here. So you can see how this is overlapped. You can use your UV window to help you. So I'm going to grab this one as well. Just make sure we got all the way around the ring and then the back one. The back one I do have to select in my perspective view because they're overlapping here. And then we'll go ahead and do our cut. And then UVs. Go ahead and move this. We'll unfold. Unfold. And unfold. Rinse and repeat. Awesome. Give us enough uh, tile space. We should be good. And then we have the hand. For the hand, I'm actually going to do a butterfly. I'm going to project it from the top. I'm going to open it uh, like this. So let's go up, do um, object mode here, and then create planner from the top. So Y. It gives us this. And you can see that it cuts directly to the top of the hand. I'm going to come underneath here. And I'm going to grab these edges all the way through the hand here. And grab this top one as well do a cut, and then I'll do an unfold. That'll do it. There's our hand. I'm going to orient this. Lay it out. Get some uh, spacing in there. And that should work. I'm going to go ahead and save real quick, just because Maya could crash. So the arm is good. Let's go ahead and do the leg here. Come down and turn my leg on. Where are your left leg? There we go. Let's grab this one. All right, so I'll go ahead and just right click, go into face mode. In these spaces, because they're straight, I'm going to go, hold, go ahead and grab this one, hold shift, double click. That's going to go all the way through. I'll do a create and then cylindrical. That'll give me a perfect cut for this because it's nice and straight. And then I have these pieces to deal with. Um, I'll go ahead and grab these. I'm actually going to do this in face mode. Grab both the top and bottom sections. And then let's do a create planar options. Do it from the top. So there are those. These are on top of each other. So I'm going to go ahead and just click off and then double click on one so I can separate it. Make sure you use your move tool there. And there's our layout. Um, I'm actually going to do this in UV mode here. There we go.
looks pretty good. I don't want to be on the outside of the edge there. We've got to make sure we're inside this space. And then rinse and repeat for the lower part of the leg. Uh, it's going to face mode. I'll grab this outer ring. Hold shift, double click it. Cylindrical. That's the top part. I'll reproject these two. Do those as planar top. Grab one, separate it with the move tool here. And let's arrange these and lay them out. All right, so now let's go ahead and do the foot. Uh, for the foot, we're going to take a projection from the top. So create, make sure we're in object mode. Create, and then planar from the top. Yes. I'm going to take the bottom, just like we did with the hair piece. Grab these edges here. We will do the cut. Go to UV mode, we'll separate the bottom and the top, so double click and just separate. We want to unfold the foot, so go to unfold. And then, this is technically unfolded, but I'll unfold it anyway. And then I will lay them out. Lay out. Grab them both, make sure we give just enough room so they're not really touching with this by itself. Okay. Do a quick save again. And now it gets to the easy part. So we did one side. To do the other, it's actually pretty easy. I'm going to grab this one, hold shift, select the other one. So the one that we want, or the, the good one, and select the bad one. Go up to Mesh come down to transfer attributes and grab the options. We want to make sure that this is on component. And if I re I'm go ahead and reset real quick so you can see what the settings are. So this is the default setting. Make sure we're on component. You would think UVs, but it's actually component. And then um, go ahead and hit apply. And you'll see that this one inherits the UV layout. Hey, because they're mirror images of each other. So that should work. And then, same deal, grab this one, shift select the other one, apply it. Grab this one, shift select the other one, apply it. Make sure that we clear the history on these, so grab these. Whenever you do the an attri attribute transfer, you want to clear the history. If you don't do it, they'll get screwy. So make sure we clear those. So to ed edit, delete by type, and then history. So now, whenever we make changes, it's not going to uh, mess up the um, one that it came from, or vice versa. Okay. Same thing with the leg. I'm going to grab the leg here. Grab the good leg, shift select the bad leg, apply. Grab the good leg, shift select the bad leg, apply. And grab the good leg, make sure it's it, shift select the bad one, apply. We can close this now. Make sure we grab all of our pieces. I'll just go ahead and grab them all and clear history. So this one is on. These are on. All the body parts. Let's go ahead and grab the whole thing. Oh, missing the hair. Make sure I grab the whole thing there. And there's still construction history. Let's go ahead and clear it. Edit, delete by type, history. So now, we should have UVs laid out, and it should be good and clean. Yes. All right. Make sure you save your work. In the next one, we're going to start texturing. So stay tuned, and I shall see you next time. Hey, guys. Thanks for checking out my channel. <laughs> Misty and I both, thank you. If you enjoyed that video just watched, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, uh, check out our online merch. You can get that on Amazon or at a Teespring store. Uh, links for that are in the description below. And now for the 
new and exciting thing that I've been working on the past uh, like month or two is our first official cryptocurrency, which is Stepdad Doge. So Stepdad Doge is a uh, BEP20 token, uh, totally for the memes, you know, not to the moon anytime soon is our as our big slogan and of course he's been keeping the kids in line um i, I wanted to do keeping the kids in line since 1949 but that's not true so i just, I just let it do this um but yeah this is what, what i'm working on making the uh, little page here and being kind of cute with it if you want to see more about you know the token and all that stuff you can check out our about page you'll see the team of course i'm the token creator and then marcus and becca they were kind of like some of the, some of the spiritual uh advisors into this um so it's like I want to make a token. I don't know what I want it to do or what I want it to be. And uh, so we kicked around that idea, and this is the idea that kind of popped up. So you can kind of read about the token, what the what the project is. There is a one trillion uh, coin cap. It's not going to you're not going to be mint, minting any of these, and you're not going to be burning any of these. And we'll get back to burning in just a second. There is a fee for all transactions, which is four percent. That way, there's something always going back into the coin, so there's always something to be available. And then there is, of course, a staking fee or a um, staking reward. So as you're holding it, you gain some coins back, 3%. Now, in, ter in terms of burning the coin, um, I don't think it's a good idea to burn something that you want to actually have value. That's kind of like a, a scheme with pump and dumps. You know, they're like, oh, this coin will burn X amount of coins, and then it'll, rate, it'll artificially inflate the price, and then you'll get... Um, be able to pull out and get some money out of it. My thoughts on that are if you want a coin to be usable and you want to be able to make trades with it and whatever, then having the supply of that token or coin diminish with trades means at some point you're going to run out of coins to trade. Um, so it just doesn't, doesn't make economical sense to me. So I did not make a burn in this coin. I want it to be useful. One of the things we want to do is make it so that you can purchase our merch with it. There is, of course, merch, which is awesome. You can check out the merch page. Um, this is the basic stuff we have here. And you can gain all of it, of course, on our Teespring store. That brings you here, and you can see various um, products and such. Um, at the moment, you cannot purchase anything with the tokens directly, because I don't know how to set that up yet. Working on it. But I do want to be able to start at this point and, of course, offer uh, games that I'm selling using the token. I was going to have a different token in mind, but I think this is going to be a fun one. And, yeah, it's, it's just going to have something that you can exchange with because more things that you can buy with it, the, um, the better the longevity of the project and the more value it's ultimately going, to, ultimately going to have. And then, of course, as far as like transparency and trades and stuff, you can, you can read that here and what we've done um, at the present time. You can also see more about the token on Binance uh, BNB. So if you go to BNB or Binance uh, Scan.com, you can take the token address. We go to the investment page here. And you can go down to the bottom and grab the uh, contract address. And just go ahead and paste that in and you can get more information about it. So here is the page so far. Um, I'm still in the works of getting the symbol approved because I, I have to have so many trades and whatever not to get all that stuff. But um, you can see it here, uh, current value and all that stuff. Really, there's, there's no value in it except for what I've already put into it. I think overall I put about $1,500 into um, creating and setting up and doing liquidity for the token and, and some other stuff. Um, and you can see the current transactions and all that on the coin. You can check that out. You can check out the contract. You can check out um, you know, how the contract's built. It's all here and whatever not. As far as um, trading, if you want to get a hold of it, it is available on PancakeSwap currently. Um, it trades for BNB, and you can, of course, go into, um, once you connect your wallet, you can go down and paste the uh, contract address, and then add it. Now, if you haven't added it yet, um, it will say, hey, anybody can make a token. Anybody can make a token here and uh, it'll give you a warning, make sure that you understand who you're getting it from and if it's approved and it's official, but yeah, the contract address should take you there. And then it'll exchange for BNB. I don't actually have any BNB in this wallet, but you can exchange for it. I want to make it so it's exchangeable across other uh, BEP20 tokens, so like uh, Wife Doge, um, Baby Doge. There's of course uh, Shiba Coin, which is an ERC token. Um, I'm going to see if I can get that working as well, but um, I don't have that up just yet. 
But the more things you can trade it with, the, the more options you have as far as like liquidity and, and uh, trading and such. So, so yeah, so if you jump down and you actually go to the investment page, I do recommend not investing in this um, unless it's something that you really want to do because this is a meme project. It is, of course, my first project. I don't have any intention of abandoning it because I, I think it's kind of neat, but um, you got to know your sources and be, be vigilant about that sort of stuff. So I can't give financial advice and say, get this, but if you want it and you really want to support the meme, then by all means, uh, help us out. Um, the more people who are getting involved in this, then the more likely we can get this on other exchanges and we can get um, sort of the ball rolling. I might do a crowdfunding page to kind of help uh, build that up. I haven't um, given out any coins or anything like that. I think for the upcoming future, I might do some giveaways, but we'll, we'll get to that um, a little bit later down the line. But anyway, yeah, so that's just us in a nutshell, what we've been doing. If you want to, of course, contact us on this page, you're more than welcome to. And there's some merch. And yeah. But anyway, hopefully I'll see you on the next round next time.